least I hope it's morning by the time this thing uploads. Today we are making the Mia Wallet by Bagstock. I have done a turn lock, which I thought was really fun. Um, I'm using a new gadget today, which is also really fun. And I have used larger press studs than the pattern suggests because I didn't have the ones the pattern uses. After I started putting these in though, I realized I probably could have also just used cam snaps for here. Uh, but there's some on each side. I really like how this wallet come together. I have, oh no, I've put chocolate on it and it looks like I've melted it in. Right, so I won't be selling this one. This one's for me. Um, but other than the chocolate, it worked out really well. I like this pattern. I like the turn lock. I like the middle pocket and it moves. So if you'd like to see how I make this, please stay tuned. So we are starting with our card slots. So I have pre-ironed them. Uh, just because that's no fun to watch and I'm going to top stitch with a two and a half stitch length across the top. I'm going to back stitch and then hope that it doesn't eat it. There we go. And then back stitch and I'm going to do both of them at the same time. So I'm just going to do one and then the other and then chop this one off and then chain stitch the next one. So I'm just going to fold that down and go again. Fold it down. I actually probably don't even need to back stitch uh, because we are going to sew down both the sides anyway. And that's pretty much next. So... I can just chop, stitch, chop, stitch, like this. And yes, it's going to come undone, but I'm not super worried about that. I can deal with that in a minute. Okay. So now I've trimmed... All of the top bits. So now I'm going to line it all back up again. Hopefully. So I steam press this to make sure that we had nice crispy parts. Oh, I've got another one to do on this one. So now we should have this. And I'm thinking I'm going to want to go and press this again. Just so it's going to sit super nicely. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stitch one side along the edge just to hold everything in place and you always stitch from the bottom up I'm lining up the edges so I'm just going to stitch one side and then I'm going to go and give it a quick press like a steam press so that everything's going to stay sitting lovely and I'm just stitching right on that edge so you won't see these stitches either but they're just going to help hold it in place. And so now I can go and give this a really good press and make them super duper flat. After I trim off all my tails, of course. Like that. So I'm going to give it a press to see how it's sitting up a little bit. By steam pressing it down, it's just going to make them super flat so I can come back and continue stitching. So they are now all pressed, but I'm just still going to stitch down the other edge as well. To make sure everything's going to stay in place and I am still going bottom to top because if you go the other way you've got to you run the risk of bending down the corners and let's be honest I love basting I do it a lot it's because it works but that's you know I just love basting okay pockets are done next we are doing and I have trimmed them down to the correct size, which the pattern says. And then we need to grab our trim panel. So again, I have clipped all of my 
pattern pieces to the pattern pieces. Uh, but I'm holding it this way because it's got the sizing on it. And I don't want to show you because that's not who I am. So I'm going to face these up the right way. And then what we need to do is we need to make one for the outside, one to the left and one to the right. So I'm going to lay it out in front of me to make sure I don't botch it. And then we can grab some clips and clip it on. And I'm going to clip both of them before I stitch it so that I don't accidentally stitch the wrong one to the wrong side. Because that is a thing that I have done, but I will be turning this one upside down because I like to sew with the bulk of my project out of my machine. Right, so then we just double check, make sure everything's good. We've got one on each side. And so now I'm going to stitch. I just had to check my seam allowance because I've obviously never made this before. I've got the instructions on my computer next to me. Stitch at the end, and then we're going to pop the second one in. Back stitch at the start. Always back stitch. And then I'm going to trim off those tails that I have going on there. Flip it over this way so that we're going to flip it onto our seam allowance there. And then we are going to top stitch. Oh, don't be like that. The black thread is not my friend today. Should have done purple. I was going to do purple. And then back stitch. And then we're going to do the same to this. We're flipping this over and stitching it to the seam allowance on this side. And back. I didn't backstitch at the start, which was very naughty. And then trim off your tails. And so now we have this. Do -do -do -do. Repeat with the other side. We've just done that. All right, so now we need to insert our little press studs. So I am using my, I don't have the little ones that they use in the video. But I am going to use my big uh, ones. So we need to measure. We need a measuring tape. We need to measure up and in. So to there and there. And then I'm just going to mark it with a friction pen. Again, I'm not giving out the sizings. And we're going to do the same to this side. So there and there. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm going to have to use my stiletto to stab that hole. And I'm going to come from the bottom up. And I'm going to just wiggle it to make it big enough to get my bits in. So again, I'm coming up from the bottom. If you've got a handheld um, hole punch, now's the time to be using it. But I got rid of mine because I had the other one, which is fine. So then I can just take the base piece and slide it underneath and push it through the hole, I hope. And if it's not going to go through the hole, I'm going to take my snips and just very carefully snip the fabric to make it wide enough to get my hardware through because again I don't have the hole punch otherwise the hole punch would punch a big enough hole obviously that's what a hole punch does so I'm just going to put my hardware underneath again and now that I've done all this I probably could have used um, plastic cam press snaps that's too late now I've already cut giant holes so moving on. So I'm only snipping like the tiniest amount of fabric just until it's big enough to get this on. Mm. 
There we go. I actually just snipped the same bit twice because I didn't cut through both of the layers. So now I've got those in, I'm going to grab my cam press, oh, which I already loaded with the correct side that I need because I knew I was doing this. So I'm going to push that up and then put this on. And then swish it down. And voila. I know it looks a little bit tricky, um, but again, it's because of the type of stuff I'm using and I don't have the hammer one. If I had the hammer one, this would all just sit a lot flatter. Push that into the top. You should always load them into the top if it works because it just squishes everything better. Right. So that's the other side in, that's upside down, but you get the idea. And so while I'm here, I'm just gonna switch this out to the top because we're gonna need that soon enough. All right, oops, I'm gonna need them later. Excellent, so we've done that, done that. So now we need our credit card slot backing panel, of which there should be two. And we are going to stitch it to the straight edge. So line it up. I'm just checking seam allowances. And again, I'm going to grab this one. Now you can clip this with some wonder clips if you want to. Make sure we backstitch. And I'm chain stitching. So this is called chain stitching. up the bottom and then we are going to top stitch the whole way around to create one solid panel so I'm gonna start here just because I can we're gonna back stitch when we get to here I'm gonna needle down and pivot I am also gonna trim this one off because it's pulling on the weight of what I'm doing was super annoying. Top stitch and back stitch. And then we're going to do the same to this one. So again, fold it over. If you want to, put some clips along here. You don't have to, obviously. I just did one without it. But at least then it's all lined up. And I'm going to do the same thing. This one will just start upside down. Backstitch to lock it in, needle down, pivot, around, trim this one off because it's in my way, and backstitch. Alright, so now we've got this that's got a backing that looks lovely. Repeat that with the other side, we did that. All right, slip pockets. Where are my slip pockets? Here we go. So they will be some of your bigger pieces you had to cut on the fold. Okay. So I need to make sure that I'm gonna do it the right way. That way we're going to just fold it in half like this with the wrong sides together. Make sure you've got it the right way. And again, if we want to, we can clip that. And then I'm just going to grab the second one and do the same thing to make sure I'm doing it all the right way.
pretty sure I did that right. Excellent. And then we're just going to top stitch the whole thing. Lots of top stitching in this pattern and I like it. I love a good top stitch. So I'm going to start on the straight edge because I like to start there. Needle down, pivot around. And then back stitch, and then just grab the second one. Now if you wanted to, you could have ironed this instead of using clips. You would get the same effect. And you chop this one off anytime it starts to annoy you. You can do it after like you've backstitched onto the other one if you want to. I do it when it starts to get in my way. It's whatever you're comfortable with, really. Okay. Slip pockets. Done. Uh, place the finished credit card slots. Onto here, like this. Excellent. And then base it all in place. Ah, oh, look at us go. Okay, so again, we're basting. We're always basting. There is a slight possibility I cut my card slots too long. Uh, I didn't use a rotary cutter, so that's my fault. So if you've done that, I'm just going to go from the bottom, because you can take a little bit off the bottom if it's incorrect, but you don't want to take it off the top. Right. Grab the second one, pop it in, backstitch, around the bend. So now we've got slip pockets underneath both the card slots so we can pop those aside and we're moving on to the zipper section. So I'm using um, gunmetal grey black teeth just because I feel like using a lot of gunmetal grey today. And this part has a fault right there in the zipper so I'm going to just chop that off I keep all the faulty bits and then I'm going to keep that because that's still long enough to use in a smaller project so it goes in my scrap zipper bin that I have going on pull that out oh okay don't ever do that I'm going to chop that off again and then I'm going to instantly singe it because I just unraveled a whole section. Okay, so that's the size I need my zipper. And so again, I'm going to use my cigarette lighter and singe it. And we're always singeing in the blue part of the flame. Um, it probably doesn't matter so much with a black zip, but if you use a colour zip and do this, it will discolor your zips. You want to try and get close into the bottom blue part, I guess. Okay. So we're going to put our zipper pull on. So I'm going to do one side and then the other side. And then wiggle it on like so. And I'm just going to put it probably two-thirds of the way across. And then we need our zipper tabs. So it actually has a pattern piece. They are little squares. Pop that away. So we fold it in half. Like that. And then in half and in half again. So like this. And I'm just going to uh, rub that on the edge of my table to get the creases. Look at that. No ironing and it sits down. And then we just pop it over the edge. Now it is deliberately wider 
than your zipper tape because depending on what size you, you're using would have depended on what size this needs to be. So she wrote it, which is very clever, to fit all size and then you just trim it down. So I'm going to clip one side on and then I'm going to do the other one as well. So fold the center. You can, I've got fake nails. I can actually just use my fake nails to create that crease. One more handy use for them sewing related wise. Like that. And then over. And then I'm just going to sit the zipper in. I'm going to push it all the way to that fold so that it's nice and all the way to the back. And then again, I'm going to grab some clips. So this is what we should have. Ignore all my fraying bits. We're going to trim it off anyway. Now we're going to top stitch along here. I'm back stitching on the zipper part though. And I'm going to run off the edge because it's easier. And then I can chain stitch this by just twisting it around. So I can start stitching and then I back stitch when I get onto the actual zipper part. And then I back stitch at the edge and then I can drive off. Cut it all up. And then we can grab some scissors and just trim this down to the size of the zip. Obviously you could have trimmed it first if you want to. This is just as easy. And then throw that in the bin. One zip. Now we need our exterior panel. Which looks like it's this piece here. And I have interfaced with Hefty for the outside. And um, medium woven for the inside. So we are going to take one of these and center it. Wait, is my zip too big? I think my zip might be too big. Oh, it is. Right. So I cut this too long. So I'm just going to unpick one end and make it shorter. That's what happens when I don't fully read all the instructions. I just read the first number and not the second one. But that's fine. It's not a big deal. Because we only top stitched it, it's only one layer of stitching I have to unpick. And as you can see, I don't actually unpick. I just cut out the stitches because I find it quicker. And I hate unpicking. Okay, so I'm just going to trim this down through here instead. Not a big deal. Put that in the bin. Top stitch this back on and Bob's your uncle. Problem solved. The reason we do zipper tabs like this is because this part is not going to be stitched. There we go. So now we put it right sides down. Look at that and it works. So this is the outside piece. And then I'm going to put the lining piece on top. Now you obviously can do this the other way as well. My zip is not centered enough. My zipper pull is getting in the way, which is why I usually do it this way. So I put lining sides up and then zipper right sides up because then the zipper pull doesn't get in the way. So the pattern says do it that way. But we're going to achieve the same goal. Basically sandwich the zipper is the plan. So I'm going to do it my way because I'm finding it easier. The zipper pull will sit flat this way. So we do lining right sides up, zipper right sides up. And then we're going to make a zipper sandwich and put the top right sides down. And that's easy enough. You just match up the lining fabric piece with the other one. Ta-da! Look at that. Especially if you've used like awesome chunky dangle zipper pulls. I promise that way is definitely easier. Right, so now we are going to stitch this together from the edge to the edge, making sure we back stitch to lock it all in. 
And I'm going to zip my zipper out of the way. And then we're going to back stitch. Now without taking it off, I'm going to pull both, both for one. Press both panels away from the zipper. So we're going to fold it over like this. And while it's still attached to save thread and time, I'm then just going to back stitch, but without cutting it off. And then top stitch both panels down and then back stitch. And then we can pull it out. So we've got stitching on both sides and it's sitting lovely and flat. Now we're going to repeat that process with the other side. Like that. And then this doesn't really have a top and a bottom, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to pop it down. This fabric's kind of all over the shop. I love it. I got this fabric from ooh, one of those pre-orders. Who do I pre-order from? I don't do a lot of pre-orders because I'm impatient and I want my fabric like right now. Uh, but this was a pre-order from Material Girl or Missy Rose. I think it was Missy Rose actually. Okay, so I probably shouldn't have um, trimmed that off. I could have just left it and had less tails. But it's too late now because I was too busy thinking about where I got the fabric from. So now we're going to top stitch along this edge, making sure everything's nice and finger pressed. You can iron it if you're not good at finger pressing yet. Um, but I'm pretty confident that that will be fine. And then I'm just going to grab this other tail and trim it off so it does not get in my way. So now we should have this. Where you've got like a fun little gap at the end and everything's flat and glorious. Right. Done that. Done that. Now we need to install our other half of the snaps that we are using. Right. So we need our magnet, uh, not our magnet, our ruler. Not a magnet. Oh, well, we could have done magnets here. You could have used small, um, small magnets to do this. And then how far down? Do do do. Right. So I'm just marking where these have to go. And then this time I can actually use my hole punch which is going to make this a little bit quicker. So I'm going to hole punch there, but I'm just go I'm not going through the lining piece. I'm just going through the outside. And then that was much quicker. Grab our other one. And then I'm going to, again, put this part up in there and squish it down. Now, obviously, these are quite large. Um, but sometimes making a statement with stuff is kind of fun. So there we go. Done that. Do, 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 do. Repeat. Done. Right. We now need our interior zipper pocket tab, which you would have just cut one off. And we fold it in half and stitch down the short edges. Now I could chain stitch this and like bend it all round. 
Uh, but that's more of a speed sewing type of a video. Now you don't want to iron this this way, you'd want to iron it the other way once we've stitched here. Whoops. See, and that's what happens. I'm getting close to the end of my black thread. So it starts getting um tight and stuck as it winds towards the bottom. And as you can tell, I have very clearly not been paying attention to it. And so sometimes it pulls a thread or breaks the thread. It's just because it's getting close to the end. But obviously I refuse to throw it out because that's wasteful. So I just have to try and be a little bit more mindful. So I'm going to stick my fingers in these corners and just push them out. Nice and simple. And then I'm going to roll it because I want them to be super pointy. And then I will finger press that edge. So we're going to put this on one of these edges. So I'm going to put it in the center on the edge, making sure I'm not getting my lining piece. And I'm just going to baste that in place. Because again, we love a good basting. And back. So now we have to open the zipper and I'm going to open it not all the way so that my zipper can't possibly get stuck. I'm going to stop it just before there and that way I won't possibly stitch it and snap a needle because nobody wants to play that game. And then we're going to put right sides together and clip down and down and the corner. We're just clipping everywhere and we're going to leave a gap in the lining middle because that'll be the easiest place to stitch up. Grab some extra clips. One, two. I've probably gone a little bit overboard with clips, but that's fine. So I'm going to start on the lining side at the edge of my open gap and then I'm going to backstitch. I'm going to get to that corner, needle down and pivot and you want to make sure that you're not stitching over your zipper tab right there. Needle down and pivot. You can see it, it might actually even give you a little bit of grief when you're getting up to it, but don't let it bully you. You can do it. Alright, now we're going to backstitch. Now before I turn this through, I am going to trim off all the excess on the corners. I'm going to use my zigzag scissors or pinking shears. Seriously though, it's so much more fun to call them zigzag scissors. And just trim off all the excess at your corners because it's just going to sit nicer. We'll get pointier, crisper edges. Unless, of course, you sewed them curved, in which case I would still clip them, but you'll have nice curved edges. So now we're going to push this through. It's getting there. I might actually get my turning stick. So this is a flute cleaner. Um, you can get them from music stores. And it is my favourite turning tool I've ever come across. I've tried lots of things. I tried chopsticks. They just stab straight through because I'm rough. Um, I've tried some other turning tools that I've come across. And I just, nothing can beat it. So I've stopped looking. It is literally just a wooden flute cleaner. But it point it pokes out the corners really nicely without damaging anything, which is what I like. So I'm gonna put I know we're gonna push the lining in, but I'm still gonna poke the corners out because it's gonna help to get everything out nicely. And you can also run this along the seam, and what it does is it pushes the seam all the way out. Right, 
I've done that. So now we're going to just tuck in those raw edges. And again, if you want to, you can use some clips. I'm going to stitch the whole way along to make it look more decorative than just the middle since it's black and noticeable. I could also have changed color, uh, but sometimes it's fun to just have the accent. But if I just did it in the middle, it would look, it would look out of place. So if I sew the whole way along, now it just looks like the other pocket we're going to do. Looks like it's a feature. So then we can just tuck that back inside and voila, zipper pocket with our little tab. Attach interior zipper pocket to lining main panel. So let's grab our main panels. Uh, my outside has got a stabilizer on it to make it super stiff. And also because I'm putting a turn lock in, I want it to be stiff i guess so we've got all our pieces over here almost all of our pieces so this is our top and this is our length so we need it up this way and then we're going to put this at the center so i'm going to fold this over and mark the center because it's going to be the easiest way to find it. I'm just going to trim off the tiniest amount and also crease it. So that is my center line. So we're going to take this and line that up there on the center line. So the center line has to come at that seam allowance. I know that's really hard to see. The center line, that's where that lines up there. Match it up. And then I'm going to top stitch that down. So I'm just going to hold it because there's not really a lot else you can do. So I'm just going to stitch, back stitch, nice and close to that edge. And voila, stitched on. Take all of my tails off and get rid of those. There we go. Now we're going to take one of our credit card slots. Now, this is where you want to think. So this is zipped up. So this for me is going to be like the equivalent to top. So I need to put this one on this side. And so again, we're going to baste it on because we baste everything and I love it. You can backstitch your basting if you want to. Along the bottom, back stitch. So then the idea is this will clip to there if you want it to. Maybe. Uh, don't be like that. It means I may not have squished. Oh no, there we go. We're fine. With these press studs, you should give them like a couple of goes and releases and it kind of loosens them up a little bit. And then we're going to line up this side and do the same thing, I'm pretty sure. Yes, we are. Awesome! I should always read the pattern because usually when I guess I get it wrong. So again, we're basting that on. I just ran out of bobbin thread, but that's okay. I have made another one. I anticipated this. Um, so when I'm not doing videos, I tend to not pre-wind a bunch of bobbins because I like to oil the bobbin thing every time. But I did do it right before this video, so it'll be fine. So we're just going to find where we left off. Back stitch and go again. There we go. Trim off all the tails you've just created. And so now that like triple clips. And then you can just unclip whichever side you don't want on. I like it. This is very cool. So that's the inside done. Now we're going to take our exterior. 
and our exterior zipper pocket piece. We don't have many pieces left, so I'm also going to bring this over. This is going to be the flat piece, which I'm going to put the turn lock in. Might as well just bring it all over because we're nearly done now. So. What are we doing? Draw a line. Da, 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 da. I'm going to do it Tory Pocket style. So, first thing I'm going to do, stitch it together. At the top, along the edge. Like so. And then I'm going to grab one of these bad boys. I need this one. And I'm just going to draw my rectangle onto one of these. Now, if you've got directional fabric, think about where you're putting it. Otherwise, it's fine. And then from here, we need to go. Going to open it up. The side we didn't draw on is going to go to the top. And then I need to measure that far down. So that's where we want it, right there. So now that I've got my rectangle already drawn, I'm going to make sure this is in the center and then stitch around the box. Needle down. I always crank the needle into that corner so I get it right in the corner. We're going to go down. That's one too many stitches. We're going to pivot down. Move my clips so I don't knock them. And then up and back stitch. I always drop something. I don't mean to. Oh, you know what I just did wrong, don't we? I stitched it to the wrong side. That's not going to work out at all. So I'm going to clip every fourth stitch. And then I should be able to just pull the top thread and it all comes out. And I'm keeping this in because... You know, you may have done this as well, and this is a good way to fix it. I know it makes this um, video longer, but it's like troubleshooting problems when you're not paying attention, like apparently I am today. So I'm just clipping every third or fourth thread, as opposed to unpicking, because this is just better, in my opinion. I don't even own a quick unpick. My my stiletto, you usually buy these, and they've got uh, one end's a quick unpick, one end's a stiletto. Mine, both is a stiletto. I don't use a quick on picks. Now when you get to the back stitching, you usually have to clip every stitch or every second stitch. But now when I flip this over, I can just maneuver up one of these and it unpicks pretty much all of the stitching. See? Look at that. And then it just comes off. How easy was that? And then I can just pull out these ends. I mean, it makes more mess than I'm picking, but only just. So let's just try that again. So we're going to put right sides together, which is clearly what I didn't do. And then I'm just going to line it back up where it was because I had already worked out where it needed to be. And do it all again. But yeah, quick unpick alternatives. Needle down, pivot, up, back stitch, that's more like it. I'm going to grab some scissors and then I'm just going to bend this over. Now this is a little bit more tricky to bend because of the stabilizer, but worth it. You could also, if you've got a rotary cutter and ruler handy, you could totally rotary cut this and then just use scissors to clip the triangles in the corner. 
I don't really have room for that over here in a video, uh, but I will do it in at least one, another day, when I think of it and have everything prepared. And I'm just triangling out those corners. And then I'm going to push all of this through that hole. And I'm going to crease the flat parts because that always works out better for me. And then pull it the rest of the way through. Now I'm going to have to go and iron this uh, because the stabilizer is going to fight me and I don't want to fight it. So I'm going to go and fold this all the way over and steam press that down. And then we will be actually... I'm going to stitch this one as well, and then I can go do it to this as well. Right. I use my fingers as like a turning wheel. I don't know if you just saw me do that. Um, you can always reverse, I guess. Then I'm going to use my zigzag scissors to trim this off. And now I only have to do one trip to the iron, or one more trip, except for the final iron, but we'll get to that in a minute. Right, so I'm going to turn this out the right way. I'm going to go and iron this so it's gloriously flat, because again, stabilizer. In fact, if you can't get it through, what you can do, quickly iron your stabilizer for like three seconds and it'll soften it up, then it'll turn through easy, and then you can flatten it. So I'm going to go and iron this flat and this in the right way, and then I'll be right back. Awesome. So I have interfaced this, uh, ironed this. It's now stiff, flat, and glorious. I've also got the zipper hole nice and flat. Thank you, Steam. So I'm going to put my zipper with, I like it closing to the left. I know I say that in every video. I'm probably going to say it forever in every video ever. I like it closing to the left. So now I'm going to stitch down over the end of the zipper, needle down and pivot. Then when I get close to the zipper head, I'm going to zip it open so that nothing stays in my way. Needle down, pivot, go over the end. And then up along the top and then zip it shut so that it's out of my way and finish back where I started I like to start and finish in the corner some people like to start and finish in the center there is no right and wrong you start and finish wherever you like and then I'm going to trim off those tails fold down that back and then I'm just going to stitch the sides shut. Now I'm not stitching the bottom shut because this is where we turn the wallet through at the end. And then I'm just going to turn up this side and do the same thing. Oops. Again with my thread. Today it's less my fault and more the machine's fault. At least I can thread it quickly, so I suppose that's a plus. Stitch up the side, back stitch at the end. You never need a lot of back stitches, guys. Two or three should do it. Okay, done skis. Done all of that. All right, so at the other end, we are going to insert our turn lock. Uh, so they come in three pieces. You get your pointy bit, which will be on here. And then this part has some little screws in it, and that is what we're going to cut the hole out of on here. And it just so happens it's going to work out that it's going to take out the teeth of the skull, which is kind of cool. And this is the gasket that goes on the back of these. So I'm going to take... A bigger ruler than that one. I'm going to grab this ruler and we're going to go into the center. So we're going to find the center and go like this, trim it so I can see where it is. And then we're going to measure down and 
it's on a black bit, which is going to make it super hard to see. And then I'm just going to measure where the two lines are that I need to cut. And I'm doing a lot of ink on the black section so I can still see it. And I'm going to grab my craft knife. Now this one is Kaiser Craft, but any craft knife will do. And I always like to have the blade pointing away from me. So I start in the bottom corner and kind of push up and it will cut in an upwards uh, fashion because the blade is angled. So if you start in the bottom and then just push until you get to the top of your markings. That's how I like to do it. Anyway, so we also need some fray stopper glue. Mine is Helma. I've had this one bottle for a very long time, but I am getting dangerously close to the end of it. So I will have to get a new one soon. And then I'm going to pop this in like that, flip her over. Now it's not going to sit flat anymore, so please be aware of that. And then we're just going to slip it through any two holes that it fits through. So it doesn't sit perfectly even uh, because they, I think they use the one gasket for multiple things. And then you can bend it in or out. That is your choice. I am going out. And you want to try and get them as flat as you can. So that when we have it this way, it feels really flat. That's the idea. Now, I am going to just, and I know this may seem a bit weird, but I'm going to get some duct tape and just put some duct tape over that. Because that's going to help it stay flat and make it less likely that you or your customer can pull it out. Whether it's deliberate or accidental. I hear horror stories of people who deliberately go and pull things out of things. So, a nice big rectangle of it. I'm going to rub it all on. You could also use some iron-on interfacing. It would probably do the same thing. I just love some duct tape. Cool. So that's that done. Turn lock is in. I'm going to open this zipper because we need to be able to turn it through later. And I am also going to top stitch this. I'm going to leave my glue out because we're going to need it again in a minute. So I'm going to top stitch this before I stick it on. And again, I'm letting it kind of pivot on my finger. It is something I never noticed I did until I record videos and then I, because I'm trying to explain everything to you, I realize I do it. I'm going to install this very, very last. That's going to be the last thing we do, so I'm going to just pop it aside so I don't lose it or drop it. We have installed that. I've done that. Top stitch. Right. So we are up to, we're going to put this in the middle, right here. The flap should be lining side up. So that's lining side up and right in the middle. So again, if you can't find the middle by eyeballing it, fold it in half, pinch it, flip it. That also works. You could do the same to this. You could literally fold in half and clip every piece to find the center. And then we're going to, actually I might baste this on because we all know I love basting. Everything else has been basted on, so we may as well stick with the theme. I didn't even backstitch because it's the next thing I'm about to stitch properly. So I didn't backstitch there. You can, you probably should, but I didn't. Well, let's grab this. Um... So we want to put the slot with the card slot tab. We're going to clip that to that side. And then we're going to put this side at the top. So I'm going to start at the bottom, weirdly enough, and start clipping around. Now, be aware that this is going to be very bulky and it's not going to seem like it's going to match up necessarily. So if I laid it down flat, it's not really going to work out. But, because you've got to remember, there's a turn lock here. 
We've got an extra pocket that's floating around up there. So the way they suggest to do this is to stitch half and then move this and then stitch the other half. I'm going to see how far I can get without having to switch it. You never know. I won't be able to do the top edge. But I should be able to get most of the rest of it. Ah, oh, Actually, if I fold this pocket into like a triangle, I know it's going to make it more bulky in the center. But I've just folded both sides down, like the corners. I should now be able to stitch the whole way around, I reckon. I have faith in my mad, mad idea. Because now everywhere can reach and there's nothing obstructing my sewing path. So I know it's more bulky in the middle, so it's sitting out quite wide. But as long as you use lots of clips to hold everything exactly where it needs to be, I reckon... We can do this in one go. It doesn't really matter where you start because we're going all the way around. But I'm going to start here because I like to start on a straight. Never try and start on a corner. You just make your life difficult for no reason. Right, and I'm going to clean out my clips as I go. Because I hate being surrounded by a bunch of mess. Now I'm lifting this up because again the bulk's starting to like do stuff. So by lifting it up and going slowly, we can get there. Yay! And I really hope I didn't botch that. Back to the start and back stitch. Now before I go trimming corners, I'm just going to look in to the center and make sure that I didn't stitch that pocket because that's what we really care about. And I feel like I'm good. So I'm happy. This is bulky. So I already know my zigzag scissors are not going to be my friend. So I'm just going to use normal scissors. And trim off all the excess. See, look how thick that is. Now I do try and use as much of the full blade as possible. Um, but cutting bulk, you tend to only use the back half of the blade. Because that's where your hand muscle works till. Right. All of that in the bin. Now for the turning. Now, because of the stabilizer, this is going to be thick and bulky. So I'm going to, I'm putting my hand in and I'm actually spreading it out like this so that I can get that corner and push. And I'm pushing it so I can grab it. Now you're going to want to go gentle with this so that you don't break it, but I'm actually just scrunching it. And that may seem counterintuitive because we like nice smooth things but by scrunching all of this stabilizer it's going to make it a little bit softer so it's going to make it easier to pull through so i'm just grabbing a bit and then i'm going to take my lining piece like i always do and i'm going to turn it so it's right sides out and what you're trying to do is encase everything in that lining. Because once it's all within the lining, you know it's going to turn through easy. So I'm just grabbing bits out that I can get a hold of and I'm pulling gently. You don't want to just pull as hard as you can. You will wreck your thing. But see how that just popped out then? And it's super, super scrunched. But that's okay. Now, my hands aren't going to cut it, so I'm going back to the flute cleaner. And please know, I will never call it my turning stick. I will forever call it my flute cleaner because it's technically what it was first. 
So I'm using my fist rather than my fingers to push that out most of the way. And then I'm just going to run the flute cleaner along the seam to make sure that the seam pushes out all of the way. Like that. And then we're going to come and do this final corner. Give it a good push. Now you can't, I don't think anyone could push this through a seam. I don't think it's doable because I'm very, very rough when I do these things. And so far, it's never happened to me. So this is now what we've got. I think we nailed it. Just quietly. It obviously needs a good iron because it's super up and whatever. You can also do the Tory squish on this thicker seam because there is quite a lot of fabric there. You've got your lining, this, your accent, and then the outside. So it is quite thick, but it is going to look fabulous when I'm finished. Make sure I'm doing all that, done all of that, done all of that. Right, we're going to, now that I've pulled it out and I'm happy with everywhere, we are, oh, actually, no, I'm not. Oh, I've got a seam. So now I have to turn it all back out and stitch that. I'm wondering if I can just sneakily pull it out just a little bit. Otherwise, I'm going to have to turn the whole thing inside out again and do that. Right, so I'm going to do that off camera because this video is getting quite long. So I'm just going to turn it out and restitch this side because there's that little bit there that I didn't catch and then I will iron it and come back. Alright, she is ironed with lots of steam to make it glorious. So now we need to top stitch. Now if you don't want to top stitch, you don't have to. Um, we also need to pull out this lining and then tuck the raw edges under and stitch this shut as well. So we might do that first. Now you can skip the top stitching if it is too thick for your machine or if you're worried that it's not going to turn out as awesome or if you just don't want to. Now I couldn't put this into the steam press because I had already put the turn lock in. So the conclusion to that is if you want to be able to press this in your steam, like your heat press, install the lock now instead of before. So I'm just going to stitch this one shut. And so now both the zipper pockets are going to look the same on the inside with this top stitching. See? Method in my madness, people. You could have also... Um, Invisible hand stitch to this shut if you wanted to. Same with the other one with the little hole. All right, so I'm going to tuck that in. All nice and tucked in there. And then we're going to top stitch. So I'm going to top stitch from this side. Actually, I'm going to check my bobbin. Yep, we're good. Check your bobbin before you're doing your final top stitch to make sure you've got enough. And if you don't think you've got enough, just wind out the bobbin. You'll use it in a different project. So, I'm going to do a couple of stitches and then back stitch. Or I'm actually going to lift it up and go back through those first stitches, which is like an alternative to back stitching. And I'm just stitching very close to the edge. And then I'm going to move this pocket up out of the way so I can do the bottom. We're just going to keep flicking that pocket back and forth until it's out of our way while we're stitching. And then again, slowly around the corner. Now this machine can handle it. Um, I don't know about a domestic. I've never sewn one. Whoa. That was nearly a snapping of my needle. That's a thick bit because my needle doesn't want to go through it for whatever reason. So 
sometimes you just gotta manually do it. Right, so this is quite thick with all the layers. So just keep that in mind if you are going to top stitch. If I was going to make another one of these, I think I would top stitch it on my cylinder arm compound foot heavy duty machine. It is a very cute wallet though. And the top, I love top stitching, so I always do it. On top of that, I also think it's nearly time for me to change my needle again. All right, so I'm back to the start. So I'm going to do two back stitches and then pull that out and trim that off. And so now all we have is left is putting in our turn lock. I bought this on eBay. Um, I've never used it before this video, so I haven't even practiced with it, so I don't know how it's going to go. But the idea is, is it takes two AAA batteries and it's like a mini electric screwdriver. So I don't know how well it's going to go, but we are going to find out. Uh, they were 30 bucks on eBay. I can add a link to them in the description. But again, I've never used them, so I have no official opinion yet. I'm going to take a pen. And I'm going to take this part. And I'm going to put it where I want it to go. And I'm going to draw my rectangle. Then I'm going to take a craft knife. And try really hard not to lose your screws. Right. So I'm going to cut on the outside edge of the line I just drew. Because obviously I wasn't quite close enough. And if you cut on the line, then it's not going to be a big enough hole. I learned this the hard way last time I did a video. So I'm just using my craft knife to slowly cut through all the layers, slightly bigger than the hole we just drew, but only slightly bigger. So I've just got this top edge. So I'm cutting from the center outwards, and then again from the center outwards. Be very careful not to cut yourself. And there is the middle bit. So now what I want to do is I want to check and make sure that it's going to fit. And the answer is no, still not big enough. That's okay. I am now going to get these little scissors. These were $4 from Bunnings. Um, I love these scissors actually. So I also need to cut a little hole so that we can get our screws in. So I'm cutting out little rectangles on the side just to make this hole a little bit bigger. I thought my video just turned off then. The screen changed. I'm like, oh dear. And so then I'm just going to trim off a little bit more from the top and the bottom to make sure that it's going to fit. So I'm, I'm taking minuscule amounts. You don't want to overdo it because then it won't be hidden. So now we'll try again. Oh, would you look at that? That is much better. So now that I'm happy with the hole, I'm just going to come and trim off all of the little flyaway bits. And then we're going to use some fray stopper glue on this so that it doesn't keep fraying on me. Love it. Literally just cut out the teeth of the skull. So I'm going to go. Now, if you've used vinyl for this, you just need to put it on the fabric side. And if you haven't used fabric side, you can skip this. I'm putting it on both sides. And I'm putting a fair amount because I really don't want this to fray. And so now we put the top in. Then I'm going to flip it over. And put the backing on. And if everything's gone according to plan, it should be hiding all of your stitches. Of which it is. But I just had some stitching going into my um, screwdriver hole. Now, by the this is magnetic, which is amazing, can I just say. So far, I'm really enjoying it. And so then we just push this one. So one's forward and one's reverse. I wonder how much pressure you can put on it. 
Might do a tassel today just to see how that goes with that. Right. So it's screwed in. That worked out pretty well, actually. I like it. I have no official opinion yet, though. Let me play with it for more than just once. But, well, it's done. I like that it comes through the mouth. That was flukishly clever of me. So that's a wallet. I, I think that come together quite well. But yeah, your top stitching, just be really wary of how much interfacing you're using if you want to top stitch on a domestic. But I do think that this is domestic friendly, so I do think you should give it a go. All right, guys. Bye-bye.